Playing one hell of a hand involving Game Pass, xCloud streaming, and auto enhancements for 20 years worth of awesome titles, the jury's still out on whether a lack of exclusives will hurt Xbox across 2021, but as an investment in gaming as a medium, the series systems are perfect for newcomers to gaming and veteran players alike. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and this is Xbox Series X slash S, 10 things you didn't know it could do. Number 10, calibrate HDR on your TV for you. If you're anything like me, though to be honest, even HDR veterans get lost in a black levels hole every time they set up a new unit, calibrating your picture for high dynamic range can be a nightmare. Different inputs output different types of signals. Streaming is a whole other nightmare of sometimes per show differences, and gaming can be genre dependent. Thankfully then, Microsoft have a pretty incredible HDR calibration app, though it's not built into the consoles themselves. Instead, hit Y from the dashboard and search for HDR. You'll find a supremely slick calibration tool that walks you through a handful of simple image-based tests, then shows you how much better the picture you've created is versus that of what came before. Even if you're completely out of whack on your TV's main menu settings, the series consoles can put everything right in minutes just by running this app. Number 9. Turn off auto-playing trailers in the store. Thankfully, Microsoft have gotten much better with their overlapping storefront UI trying to play game trailers in the background while you were just trying to view a title's price. Even on newer systems though, auto-playing video and audio can be an annoyance, especially if you've got something like Spotify playing in the background. To toggle off either auto-play video or keep video but auto-mute sound, just hit the main three-line menu button when on any list of games inside the store to smooth out that whole set of interactions even more. Number 8. Some old games use Auto HDR better than others You've no doubt heard of Auto HDR for all games that don't have it, but Microsoft also coded series systems to auto enhance your entire library. As many have found diving into everything from Beyond Good and Evil to Sleeping Dogs, there are scores of games that never had deep colour contrasts programmed into them that interface brilliantly with Xbox's new tech. Again, this is all emerging over time, but there's a short list of games that benefit more than others to auto HDR, being compiled mostly by word of mouth. Some examples are the Splinter Cell games. Even the 2002 original's lighting really punches through the shadows as you slink by as Sam Fisher, and Rocksteady's Arkham series looks outstanding too. The Mass Effect trilogy, Red Dead Redemption, Geometry Wars, anything where you think a game already has awesome scene setting and a wide range of colours will look so much better when it's enhanced. Number 7. Send captured images and video to your phone not gonna lie, both the ninth generation's flagship companion apps are pretty incredible. Letting you do a mix of things, including managing system storage or setting off downloads remotely, Microsoft go one better and provide additional options for all captured footage or screenshots. Simply tether logins between your system and the app, and once you've captured a screenshot or video, you'll get a notification on your phone when it's finished processing. From here, head into My Library and then Captures to view fully rendered videos or stills that you can download to your phone or share online. A time of recording this is a little delayed based on what I have to assume is the sheer amount of hashtag content being processed, but you can always access your captures on console if you don't want to wait any longer. Honestly, twinning photo modes in-game with a console level option to get them on your phone is pretty damn genius. And it's meant my phone's wallpaper changes pretty much every time I play something new. No Man's Sky, you absolute babe. Number 6. Play downloaded content offline without verification checks Xbox didn't have the smoothest of runs last generation when it came to digital rights management, and although the landscape for digital storefronts versus physical purchases has changed quite considerably, it's worth addressing that you can play all games on your Xbox without an internet connection. To do so, head into Profile and System, Settings, General, Personalization, and then set the option to make this my home Xbox. Keep in mind that you can only do this five times a year, but designating a system as your primary console means that all installed content is available regardless of an internet connection. Number 5. Set controller defaults for all games Something Microsoft pioneered back on the Xbox 360 that Sony finally caught onto properly on PS5 is system-level remapping and customization of all controller inputs. Just head to Ease of Access, Controller, then Button Remapping to bring everything up. While remapping buttons can be helpful for various accessibility reasons or for a custom layout you prefer per game, in this same menu you can alter a few other things too. One is ensuring that every game's camera options are forever set to invert Y. 
turning off vibration for all games or customizing exactly what the dedicated share button now does. In regards to vibration, some older titles never came with the option to turn this stuff off, but toggling it at the system level forces the change in any game. Number 4. Use any old Xbox One controller Like the Wii Smash Brothers tournaments that saw old school players bringing GameCube controllers to the party, the series systems are backwards compatible with both hardware and software. That means all your older Xbox One pads can connect and run smoothly, though you do lose the functionality of the dedicated share button that I mentioned earlier. Even better, Hyperkin's super cool version of the obscene and beloved, to be honest, at least by me, Duke controller, works like a charm on Xbox Series consoles. We're not sponsored by these guys whatsoever, but if you grew up with Xbox and want to play some original Halo in the best way possible, this is easily the most authentic way to do it. Number 3. Zoom in to any unreadable text Every now and then we get a game that includes unbelievably small text, reminiscent of the squinting we all had to do to read the original Dead Rising's messages in 2006. Thankfully there is a system level solution though, and while it's obviously essential depending on your eyesight, being able to blow up any part of the screen is just handy for scores of open world games, RPGs and more. To do this, hop into Settings, Accessibility, and turn on the Magnifier. From here, just hold the Xbox Guide button whenever you want to get a closer look at anything on screen, push the Back button, and use the triggers to zoom. Dead Rising certainly learnt its lesson over time, but if anything else comes along, Xbox has you covered. Number 2. Filter your optimized games Yes, the Xbox Series Windows Phone style dashboard is super similar to what went before, but the devil is in the details. In this case, that means ways to zero in on precisely which titles run best on new hardware. Whilst this is an easy thing to pick up on in theory, simply down to how the generation has rolled out, with so many dev teams releasing next-gen patches alongside details of auto upgrades from the base Xbox One version, it's worth taking stock of how to actually view your Series X slash S games. Not to mention, with so many titles rotating through Game Pass, any number of them could have been updated while you were playing something else. It's worth doing a check over your library every now and then, just to see if something has been improved. With all that in mind then, head to My Games and Apps. Then in the Games tab, select the drop-down filter and switch all console types to optimized for Xbox Series XS games. Sticking with this version of a title means you're getting the one a developer actively spent time curating, improving and specking for Xbox hardware, on top of the system's automatic upgrades like baseline faster loading and auto HDR. And number one, stream to your phone and keep playing. It's kinda crazy how little game streaming has caught on. Nobody really wanted it from day one with Google Stadia, and while that service has alternated between being a laughing stock or one of the only good places to actually play Cyberpunk 2077, Xbox's side of things is head and shoulders above anyone else. No joke whatsoever, Game Pass streaming is the wide-eyed vision of the future version of streaming that we all thought was never possible. By syncing controller inputs directly with Microsoft servers, it eliminates the one thing that killed PlayStation Now's early incarnation of streaming, lag. To go one better though, your entire Xbox Game Pass library saves are cloud synced, meaning if you grab the Xbox Game Pass app on tablets or phones, you can keep playing after the console is put to sleep. A few games of Halo in bed, gears on the toilet, again I'm amazed at how well this all works, and as streaming is included as part of Game Pass Ultimate, you might as well factor it into how you play. The results are pretty awesome. And those have been various different things you likely didn't know that your own Series X or S just couldn't do. Let me know your own favourites down in the comments below and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.